Good evening. evening. Welcome to worship here at Diamond Lake Lutheran Church on this Maundy Thursday. Is my microphone working? No. Is it working now? Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship at Diamond Lake Lutheran Church on this Maundy Thursday. A special word of welcome to those of you who visit with us tonight. Uh, especially those of you who are seated in this section right here, uh, who have come to be a part of a communion celebration for some young people in this congregation who have completed communion instruction. We'll say more about that later in worship, but we are glad that you are here tonight. This Monday Thursday begins the triduum of the church calendar, the three holy days. Tomorrow night we will gather here at 6.30 as well for Good Friday worship and then Easter morning at 10 o'clock. A word of thanks to all of the people who are making worship tonight possible. There's a whole lot going on behind the scenes uh, that makes this happen. Hello to those of you in the choir loft. We're glad that you are here tonight. Friends, it is good to be together. Let us worship. rise in body or in spirit for the confession and forgiveness. Friends in Christ, in this Lenten season we have heard God's call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God and one another. This is the struggle to which we are called at baptism. Within the community of the church, God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation. On this night, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor and enter the celebration of the great three days reconciled with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
Friends, God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn is number 468 in the back of your red worship book, Around You, O Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace, and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. This is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. 
This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. The Gospel for this Maundy Thursday comes to us according to St. Matthew, the 26th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now while Jesus was at Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment, and she poured it on his head as he, as he sat at the table. But when the disciples saw it, they were angry and said, why this waste? For this ointment could have been sold for a large sum and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you trouble the woman? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. By pouring this ointment on my body, she has prepared me for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray him to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he began to look for an opportunity to betray him. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the 12 disciples and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, truly I tell you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. At this time I invite the children to come forward for the Sermon on the Steps. How 
how are you doing? Good. You're doing okay. So some of you have been a part of this thing for the last six weeks for all of Lent, where we have been talking about this one sacrament, right? Okay, so we're going to review just to make sure it really stuck in your brain. What sacrament are we talking about? What sacrament are we talking about, especially tonight? Communion. And how many sacraments do we have in the Lutheran Church? Two. We have two. Yeah, and what is it that makes a sacrament again? Does anyone remember? Raise your hand if you remember what makes a sacrament. Yeah. Uh, spirit and body. Spirit and body, super close. Spirit and, it starts with an S. Stuff. Spirit and stuff. And what is the stuff of this sacrament tonight? Bread and wine. And what is the other sacrament that we have? Not communion. What's the other one? Baptism. And what's the stuff of baptism? Water. You all have really good memories. I'm really impressed. Okay, and why do we do this? Why do we do this anyway? Why do we do this sacrament? To remember Jesus. Because Jesus says, do this. Jesus says, do this to remember me. Right? And so we do this to remember him. Do you remember two weeks ago, we tried to figure out how many people... So, okay, first of all, whose table is this? Who, who, who... Oh, it's everybody's table. Does it belong to me? No. Does it belong to this church? Does it only belong to this church? No, it belongs to everyone. And how many people can fit at that table? We tried hard to figure it out, didn't we? How many? Infinity. Infinity people can fit at this table. It's true. We figured that you could go out the doors and you could go down Portland Avenue and you could just keep going and we would, we, the circle would just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So everybody's welcome at this table and everybody fits. That's the review part. Here's the deal. This story that we've been talking about this whole time, about when Jesus gathers for dinner with his friends, and he, he lifts up the bread and he lifts up the wine, that's the story for tonight. Tonight is that night in the story. Out of all the days of the year, tonight is that story. And it's kind of a big deal. When he says, remember me, right? And he does all the things we talk about. Here's the thing. I told, I told an extra part of the story tonight, and I don't know if you heard it. I added the part that comes right before this story. It's the part about a woman. Were any of you listening to this part of the story? This woman comes, and Jesus is sitting with his friends, and she comes and she pours this oil on his body as a blessing. And are his friends happy about this? They're kind of mad about it, aren't they? And they try to pretend like they have better ideas for what that blessing could have been used for, but really they're just wishing they had thought of it first. Right? They're kind of mad about it. They're kind of mad that she had the gall to walk in and say, I'm going to bless Jesus. I get to do this because I thought of it. And how does Jesus feel about it? Is he mad? Is he crabby? He's not crabby at all. He defends her, doesn't he? He defends her, and he says, Whenever the story is told, what she did will be told in remembrance of her. That reminds us of something. What is this remembrance of who? Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus says that, right? Is this woman Jesus? No. Jesus is God, right? We've established that. Is this woman God? Oh, she's not. Is she just an ordinary woman? Yeah. Here's what's kind of funny. We don't even know her name. She doesn't even get a name in this story. We don't know her name. We just know that she is someone who loved Jesus and who came to do a thing that was really good, even if other people got mad about it. That sounds like a good name for her. That sounds like a good name for her? All that big, long string of words? A little shorter. Maybe you can brainstorm good names for her during the rest of the service, and then at the end you can tell me what you came up with. Should her name be Church? Well, that's a, good, that's a good point. So here's where I'm going with this, Allie, right? That we don't know her name, but, but what she did, she, she demonstrated our role in this story. 
if we're going to be a part of this story together with Jesus and together with all of his friends who were there at that dinner that night, we are called to be at the dinner, and we're going to do that in just a little while. We're going to share communion with all the people who are here. But we're also called to be like that woman whose name we don't even know because she was just an ordinary woman, and we are just ordinary people, and she did a good thing. And we are called to leave this meal and go out into the world and do good things, even if people are mad about it. That's our job as Jesus followers, to bless other people and to do good in the world, even if other people get mad about it. That's the job. Isn't that a weird job? That's the job. Were you going to say something? What do you think of this job? Do you think you can do it? No. Do you think so? Do you think it'll be super easy? No. Yeah. Indy thinks it will be. Everyone else thinks it won't. People of God, do you think this is an easy job? No. Do you see they're shaking their heads? But that's the job. That's our job, and it's the job of all the people sitting out there. It's the job of all the people who follow Jesus. To come to this meal, to be reminded that we're in this together, and then to leave this meal being like this woman whose name we don't know. And blessing people even when other people are mad about it. That sounds like a good name for her. Blessing people even when they're mad about it. No. Before that. What was the name? You think of it and tell me later. Blessing is a good name. We could call her Blessing. That's the job, okay? You have to be like Blessing. Can you do it? Are you up for the task? All right. That's all I have for you. Thanks for coming up. You can go back to your seats. We continue with the hymn of the day, which is printed in your bulletin. Please rise for the prayers of the people. Trusting in Jesus, who gave his life for the world, 
Let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Christ broke bread, shared it among his disciples, and said, this is my body given for you. May we who share in Christ's generosity be generous to others. May we hunger and thirst for reconciliation. May we, like him, be peacemakers. And may we give of ourselves, not counting the cost. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Christ took the cup and said, drink from it, all of you. May we seek unity in the church, holding firm to the essentials, but treating all other matters with a gentleness of touch. We pray for those who feel alienated from the church, that they may know the unconditional welcome of the Jesus, the friend of sinners. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Christ was betrayed by one of those closest to him. By the power of the Spirit, may we have courage to be faithful even to the end and to bear witness to the crucified King. We pray for our nation, for those in authority, and for those who uphold our laws, that they may pursue what is right and just. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Christ knelt in the garden and wept for the sins of the world. Break our hearts that we may weep for this world torn apart and broken by war, greed, and exploitation. Remind us of our responsibilities for the hungry, the destitute, and the lost. And grant us eyes to see beyond the cross to a new creation where peace rules and every tear is wiped away. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive these prayers, loving God, for the sake of the one who loved us to the end, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to turn and share a sign of that peace with those who are seated around you. The ushers come forward at this time as our service continues with the offering.
Please rise for the offertory. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with the hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, which is to say, on the night in which Peter promised that he would never ever leave him, on the night in which Judas arrived, 30 pieces of silver already tucked into his tunic in some confusing, premeditated quid pro quo. On that night, even knowing everything that would take place afterward, Jesus called on his closest friends, the ones who were like family, and asked them to prepare the Passover meal. On that night, even knowing everything that would take place afterward, Jesus invited his friends to dinner. Something was off in Jerusalem that night. You could almost taste it in the air, the way you can taste metal in your mouth if you bite your tongue too hard. The people were on edge. They pretended everything was fine, but they knew better. On that night, at that table, with his closest friends gathered for the Passover meal, Jesus took bread. He raised it up in thanksgiving to God. He said, this bread is my body. I am here with you now, but soon that will all change, and you will need a reminder. This bread, he said, as he broke it, is food for the journey, courage to mix with the fire in your belly. This bread is my body, he said, given for you. Do this, he said, and remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, he said. This cup is the promise of forgiveness and new life, even when it seems like everything is lost, even when it seems like you are lost. This cup is my blood, he said, the promise of grace poured out for you. Drink this, he said. Do this and remember me. For as long as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we do just that. We remember. We remember his life, his witness, his death, and his resurrection. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, then we are bold to pray, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A few words about how communion works in this place, especially for those of you who visit with us, and then a few words about how it will be different tonight. Uh, First, 
The families of the kids who are uh, celebrating completion of communion instruction, they will come forward first. Lacey will usher them up one family at a time, and they'll just come across here, and we will, we will um, give communion to them, and then they will be seated. Um, each of those children, I'd like to point out, uh, receives tonight the, the grape juice. They got to choose wine or grape juice. Uh, they have a, a larger fill, if it's grape juice, uh, in these cups that they get to keep. And the bread that we share tonight, uh, they baked it. It's really good. So that's what we'll be using tonight. Um, if you wish to receive the sacrament, when you come forward, please put your hands out, receive the bread in your hands, and then dip it either in the red wine or the white grape juice. Both of those is in each of these chalices. Uh, if you are new here, or even if you're not, because when I say this out loud, it always happens that the person who does it has been here for 25 years. Uh, if you put the bread in your mouth because you forget, don't take, it, don't take it back out again so that you can dip it. Just eat it, and we'll give you more. We have an abundance in this place. Uh, if you are a gluten-free person, please note that we have gluten-free wafers and a separate chalice of grape juice for the gluten-free wafers. If you would prefer to have a blessing in place of the sacrament, come forward with your hands over your heart, and we will offer you a blessing instead. If you are physically unable to come forward, please alert an usher. We will bring the sacrament to you in your seat. Friends, this, this is bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come, eat, be fed.
Let us pray. O oh God, you are hospitality. You are welcome. You are the invitation, the table, the feast. By your spirit, may we learn to receive and offer grace, to share from the sustenance of our lives and not simply its crumbs. Embolden us as we turn our ears toward those who continue to ask for justice and bread. In Christ we pray, amen. Now we turn to the Psalms, the prayer book of the Bible, to hear words Jesus knew well. We recite prayers of lamentation, prayers Jesus also recited in his time of trouble. As we remove holy objects, we remember that Jesus was crucified outside the temple, outside the city walls, apart from all that is sacred. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, from the words of my groaning? O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They sneer at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let God rescue the one in whom God delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs are all around me. A company of evildoers encircles me. My bound, my bound hands and feet, I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul. 
from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion, from the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters in the midst of the congregation. I will praise you. Thank you. 